Project cars are like people. You never know if they're all there. That's a Monroe number, isn't it? Oh, you found the jack? Two of them. Yeah. Two of them. So these Neither one of them's right. right. <laughs> What'd you find now? Wiper motor. Equalizer bar for the clutch it's pedal hypo. assembly. The upside is you might get a really good deal because this is a lot of work. Oh, look what Jeffrey has. This is what makes the air. The bigger the prize, the more chances you'll take. The supercharger. The actual unit. And this was a really big prize. Well, I had to pull the trigger, buy the car, be done with it immediately. They were in a rush to get the car sold. That's a lot risky. Everything's numbers matching on the car. My verification of everything that I've got through the Shelby American Automobile Club indicates that it's all correct and accurate. Difficult enough to find a 67 Shelby, let alone supercharged at the factory by Shelby when new. This is a big air filter. See the inside of it's a big air filter. So it's drawing air from here, going into here, and then the hose coming out to here, which is we haven't found yet. Right? We're at Yellowstone Mustang Ranch. This is Jeff Yergovich. You know, the guy that restores Shelby's has 65 Shelby on the rack. I've restored the whole thing. A 67 Shelby, pretty much done. But the reason we're here, who even knew they made such a Shelby? We got one in this trailer. The caveat, the car's disassembled. We're going to lay out all the parts and see what we have and what we don't have. This car was all apart. I can't even, I don't even remember what that was. It, it's in a box somewhere in the car. We'll have to figure it out. It was in three different locations. Some parts were at his house. Some parts were at another repair shop. And then the body and car was actually at another paint facility that was behind a gas station. That's where how the car was sitting when we found it. Spent 22 years buying parts for the car and they're all in boxes. Come on, Sam. Come on, Yeah, box too, because that's all for that. Some of these items Jeff had never seen, like the Coney shocks. They're adjustable shocks, but these do not look like Coney's. I wonder if this is something that was special with this car. Be a part number on here. It's a C5AE, but is that the correct dampener? No, this is a, the name brand. It's not. It's not Ford. Should be about that wide. Well, now, this. So this, this is the extra go, belt. This should go inside of this, like this. Okay, so there's your. Right. And then, and then that would bolt to here. Right. So you've got your alternator, your power steering, and it's, the blower. Yep. You know, it's the first original blower car I've ever put together, and I've been building 67 Shelby's since, well, I say I did my first one in 1973. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing it a long time. This is the first one I've had in hand that I can look at and see. Well, no, it's going to open. Let's see what it is. Huh. They're decals for the shocks. Lots of stuff different about this car, documented in the Shelby registry. When he initially called me to sell it, I went to the Shelby book and looked it up, verified that it was a supercharged car, which in the book it tells me what information, very little information, small paragraph on the car. And I just told him what I initially thought it was worth. Shelby cranked out 11 of them in 1966, all GT350s, a Paxton supercharger, boosted the 289's 306 horsepower to 395. What about the supercharged 67 models? Is this a Holy Grail car? Probably not, but they only made a handful of these cars and only a few of them known to still exist. So it's a pretty rare car, let's put it that way. We'd never seen one, but now we had one. The guy that owned this car bought it, and he kept the original newspaper he bought it out of. So I have that newspaper that goes with the car. In the newspaper of the Seattle Times, Monday, August 16th, 1999. This is what the car looked like back in when he bought it. The ad reads, 67 Shelby GT350, factory supercharged, one of 28, project car, complete, $14,500. Had a little dent in the quarter panel. Just a piece of metal they cut out of it.
The irony is the paperwork that the dealer blew it up before they sold it. Yeah. <laughs> documented the car in a very unusual way. Gotham Ford. New York, New York, where people ride more than subways. At some point, it had a lifters collapsed and a bent rod. So, and this was like less than 10 days after the original invoice when it was new. March 24th, it was delivered to the dealer and invoiced out. Somebody over revved it. <laughs> <laughs> With a blower on it, they blew it up. Who knows? No way, uh, it's all a guess. But, you know, it makes it all fun to figure out what we're guessing about. They painted the car and COVID hit. They just locked up the shop and walked away from the car and it sat there for two years. Once I agreed to buy it, I was taking everything that looked like it belonged to the car and that's what's in the trailer. Just have to look and see. Here's a radio, obviously it needs to be restored, but once we unload it, we'll find out how many parts we have that are duplicate, which ones are go to the car. Hopefully everything's there. Jeff cleared out this garage to unload the car and the parts. As long as all the pieces are there, it's not a bad thing. I don't know that we got everything, but we got everything that was there. The car is nothing more than a huge model car. You just gotta find all the correct pieces to put on it together and start building it. I have no idea what the mileage is on it or anything. They shot it single stage acrylic enamel. What's this original color called? Brittany blue. Brittany blue? Yeah. It's you know what's weather, stri weather stripping? Yeah, I'm trying to see what the date is on That's these. what I was looking for too. It's 75. Yeah, 10, 10 15, 15 75. 75. I think some of these weather strippings now, like the front and back windshield weather stripping, you're talking five, six hundred dollars a piece. The whole weather strip kit for the car would be a minimum of 2,500 bucks. What number is this car? 1071. So, we're gonna pull out the Acapulco Blue 67 GT350. It'll be fun to lay out the parts, see what we got. This Shelby is almost the same car, so great for comparison. Both 1967 models, both are Shelby's, GT350's, 289 high performance engines, one has a supercharger. My name's Joel, I'm from up in uh, Buffalo, New York. I'm just excited to be a part of it. You know, not everybody gets a chance to, uh, you know, indulge in the information that these guys have. So what are the logos in there? I don't know. <laughs> Another heavy hitter along for this find. In the motor. Um, well, my name's Jeff Mates, I'm a member of the MCA past president. I just know these parts because it's been a passion of mine for the last 30 years. Okay, well, Joel has a history question. Anybody want to take a wild guess what it costs to ship this box? October 31st, Halloween is 75. What do you think it costs to ship this box UPS? $1.50. 66 cents. Holy cow. This this is like this is it's like a kid in a candy shop being able to go through and just find these really unique parts. Joel's trying to figure out what this stuff belongs to. It's it's old cars parts and not new car parts. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, if you want information on a 12 or 13 boss, you're it. I'm it. <laughs> wow. Is it still wrapped? Wow. Really nicely done. Look at this. Silkscreen or sticker? Silkscreen. The, the lettering is silkscreened on and not a decal. See the flaws? See the flaws in the, in the chrome Chroming. here? This is brand new out of the box. It's never been installed in anything. Oh, well, this is not a cheap item. Probably somewhere $1,500. So, we're organizing the parts to lay out on our white carpet. From 1999, somebody spent a lot of time making sure they had all the correct parts to put this car back together. It just didn't get put back together at the time. So, this becomes ideal for me to make sure every piece and every part, since the car is completely disassembled, goes back together correctly. The car is factory supercharged from Shelby American. Not a car that was delivered with the supercharger in the trunk makes a difference. Shelby American actually put the supercharger on this car and then shipped it out to Gotham Ford in New York City.
we're finding that most everything is here to complete this car. This is wrapped up for transportation purposes, basically, but it's a new old stock bumper. The license plate frame. Holy cow. Uh, oh, uh, Carol Shelby's. Well, and even these original are hard to come up with. How many's it got? Six, eight, yeah. Four. Wow. The New York license plates are vintage for the era of 1967. So these are hard to get. It's tough to find. These old plates, wow. These are somewhat worth some money. So these are obsolete, but you can get uh, permission from the state to use these. Still. The grill is original to the car, along with the lower grill. They hadn't even painted those yet. Looks like they're still in prime. Here's the lower grill. And then the upper. Inboards. Outboards. The emblems are all original plastic style emblems. This would be the radiator support rubber air flap. All the bumper arms are unique to the car for 67. In 67, they cut the tube off and moved it forward because the front end's longer. The radiator is the original radiator for the car. The blower has been rebuilt by Paxton. If you're going to restore, you got to put this supercharger back on. Anybody can install a Paxton on their Mustang. Just follow the directions. Restorers, however, want to know exactly how Shelby did it and with what parts. They're recreating history. Can you tell anything different about a supercharged car as it sits? Or? No. Uh, other than this ugly hole that's cut in here is factory. That's what Shelby did for the, the blower to draw air from. Okay, so this is the air cleaner box. This is going to be up here at some point. I think that's an original screen to stop any debris from coming down and hitting that. So there's got to be another bracket here. Look at this. This has got a screw hole in it. So this is the tensioner for the supercharger. It's drilled for balancing. There's a nipple on here and this is what... Yeah, so would this run up, up to, to the, the T-fitting? Right. And that's what keeps the diaphragm from collapsing, collapsing under the extra pressure. The carburetor that goes with the blower inside the box is a <laughs> solid gold. This is what everybody looks for. It's a C6 ZFC Autolite 4100 carburetor. This is the hard to get hypo carburetor. Look at the inside of this thing. This thing looks like it's NOS. That's been bolted down before. It's got some marks on the feet. But yeah, it's super clean. Look at clean. the markings inside. Yeah, yeah it's super clean. This will go inside the air box that's pressurized for the blower. Let's get it over here where we don't drop it. This is exciting. This is uh, neat stuff. Have you seen any of these supercharged cars at shows? No. Never seen one? No. Are there any that have survived that we know? Uh, I think there's some out there, but they're in private collections. Every other GT350 came with a Holly carburetor. Too big to fit in this air box. You can't use the uh, Le Mans bowl carburetor inside the blower bonnet. It won't fit. That's why they use the K-Code carburetor, in it, the Hypo carburetor. This is pretty unique, the way this is all set up. This, the carburetor has this stud on it. See that? Yep, it go in it. And it goes in here and sits, and then your accelerator rod hooks. Hooks here and runs the accelerator because all of this is in a sealed box inside this is the word the throttle got to be able to run the throttle on the carburetor see it sits in a little sleeve this is like christmas isn't it <laughs> <laughs> have you ever messed with these before no well i've i've messed with them yeah on not an original car, but aftermarket-wise. The valve covers are, are are not original. The wheels are original Magstar wheels that have been restored. 
done by, I bet it came from Coles. Greg. Shelby Parts and Restoration? Yep. Jim Coles restored these wheels somewhere around August 30th, 2002. The exhaust manifolds are original. The shifter linkage and parts and somewhere along the line after this car was fixed at the dealer, they've obviously raced it, drag raced it. The clutch pedal is something unique we haven't seen before. The, the supercharged gauges, of course, are here along with the original gauges styles that hang under the dash. Okay, Jerry, here's your holy grail that nobody ever gets to see. You can get some pictures of it, but these are the Paxton original gauges for the Paxton supercharger that hang under the dash along with the other gauges that are over here, which we're going to try to piece together. So we got to have a close look at these gauges. Yeah, these original gauges. See how this one's all fogged up in here? It's a little cloudy off to one side. These are definitely the original gauges. Do you see a brand anywhere? Well, this would be the EELCO. And that's, that's your, see your little triangles around that? On the face of the gauge, you've got the same tri three triangles. All the seat belts are original, datoed to the car. The door panels, we have one NOS door panel. It's real. Oh, look at that. The old stuff. Yep. God only knows where he found that. Truly the coup de draw. New old stock passenger side door panel. The one original door panel. The panel itself is in really good shape. Two NOS lower, lower grills, window regulators, small parts in the door are not actually laid out and seen here. The car indicates by the dash that it's got 27,000 miles we believe that it's accurate and that it has not rolled over. Apparently, this car didn't get used much. How many miles do you think, Jeff? You know, I have no idea. 27,349 miles. It's a straight line. So it's not been over? No. So it's original 27,000 miles, okay? Yep. That's what I would say. Still under warranty. Look at that. Still got the 8,000 tack in it? Yep. Silk screen. Somebody took a lot of care to wrap it up in the bubble wrap and the paper wrap. The original wiring harness is still on the back. Hadn't been touched. We believe this car, based on what we're looking at and the quality of parts that we have, spent a lot of time getting the engine fixed after somebody blew it up. <laughs> That's a little darker wheel than what you normally see, but it wouldn't be not be unusual to have that. Looks like it's been refinished. Yeah, it's a beautiful wheel. I found that one button, Jerry. But this wheel is more of a blonde wheel. That wheel is a rosewood wheel. We've got the upper side scoops, the lower side scoops. A flathead bolt in here with two rivets holding this inside. What's this right here? No, 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 no. These studs are a bolt. It comes through the inside. There's a metal bracket that goes in. Don't look at that car's got functionals on it at 2,000. No. Okay, well, you're going to have a different. So this you're, you're gonna, that's a Here's what it's supposed to look like. This is later though, because it's non-functional. I, I, I get what you're saying about that, but this is all chopped fiberglass. That's hand-laid fiberglass. That's it. Those are those are correct. I'll, I'll take that one to the bank. I think you're wrong. Well, I think I'm right. Well, I guess when it shows up at the show and I get taken off, it'll be your fault. <laughs> so the interior trim panels, the fold down seat, the back seat with all the seat belts, the tail lights, the brake shoes, which are, you know, two and a half inch brake shoes, which are riveted, the tail lights and all the uh, adjoining parts to put the tail lights on. The rear bumper is an NOS bumper. We've kept it wrapped up to keep it from getting scratched. Uh, but it's an original Ford bumper. The tail light panels actually got the part numbers in, in the fiberglass mold when it was made. Hand laid glass. Here's your part number. Here, no, there's two of them here. This is your, your S7 MS. See, it's 63 is a fastback, which they're all fastbacks. But they, this panel has comes a couple different ways, three well, different you, ways, you actually. Can show right here with the raised tail light panel. The difference. Flat tail light panel. See where this, where the tail lights are on and it's flat right here? Yeah. Okay, so later on, it rolls out and it's raised. Makes sense. 
These are all the supercharged Shelby. Came with a flat panel. Let's see where the guys at Shelby got drill happy. See how this hole's drilled really funny? It's called a nibbler. It punches a hole the size of a pencil, and they have to come around both sides, and they can just go punch, 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 and it's really quick and easy, and there's no grindings anywhere. The taillight bezels that go around the taillights are actually Fomoco with Shelby part numbers on them. The gas cap is the original cap off the car. We actually have four or five new gas cap emblems to put on it that were collected by the previous owner. And this actually holds the tail lights in position behind in the trunk so that they don't fall out of the fiberglass panel. All of our emblems are new old stock and in forward boxes or bags. These are the original tail light housings uh, and the original lenses. We actually have, if you look at this lens, you can see cracks in it. And we actually have two new lenses in Ford boxes to put on this. Oh, now these are really nice here. Yeah, really. Look at the rubber gaskets on it. Oh yeah, this whole thing looks like it's brand new. The seats have been redone, from what I can tell. How can you tell? Um, on the back sides of things, the burlap that's underneath the seats have all been replaced with new burlap. So somebody's had them apart. These seats have been all been reskinned and replaced. The weave does not breathe like it's supposed to. It's an aftermarket style skin. This is original upholstery and you can see the, the way the graining is and it's open. Upholstery. Missing the tires, but not unusual to be missing tires. Uh, I've only seen one other, and I can't remember how long ago that was, to actually have one in my hands now. I need to go through and verify all the aspects of what was actually on it, what was not on it, what's correct in its components from the fuel pump to the date codes on everything and complete the research for somebody down the road that could find another one just like I did. So wherever your air is coming from, probably your backside of your carburetor, it's your intake manifold and this tees off that's going to give you map. Okay, but it also pressurizes the fuel pump. So turn to increase the fuel pressure for the amount of air that's coming in. Right. So, but look how much this was. That whole box was sixty-six Seattle, cents. Tacoma. <laughs> so what's it cost to ship this now? <laughs> uh, I'd probably say thirty or forty bucks, probably. <laughs> Talk about inflation. I was making money now. <laughs> There's a filter inside. It says caution for a reason. I know. <laughs> Don't drop. It's supposed to be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> the dash is here somewhere. I've still never seen it. It's in a box somewhere. We should call the dealer and see if they got any records on it. Yeah, right. Like they're still open. <laughs> did you see that bag? Did you see the look on him when he did that? It's like. <laughs> uh, Farm Bureau investigator. <laughs> this right here is the, the, their tracking number. This is their account number, and we're at we're at one Z now. You can't scan that barcode. No, no, that that uh, that uh, those numbers don't even exist anymore. Tracking. You should scan that. See if you can scan it. See what it'll do. It won't. It won't even. <laughs> <laughs> you write the address down. You had to do all that stuff by hand. You don't mind being in my video, do you? No, sir, I sure don't. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>